My name is Cynthia Bateman. I'm an interventional cardiologist at South Denver Cardiology. to think of myself as a plumber for the heart. There are arteries that feed the heart muscle and sometimes they get clogged up with plaque as well as clot. And I'm one of the doctors who specializes in opening those arteries, either doing, during an acute heart attack or even during a stable um, chest pain syndrome when patients are having symptoms. We go in and open those up with balloons and stents. Heart disease exists in women. It can occur in women who are in their 40s and it can occur in women in their 90s. Sometimes we don't think of us having heart disease. We feel that we are protected um, for many different reasons. And we've always concentrated on men having heart disease. Over the past few years, I think the American Heart Association has made great strides in having women recognize that heart disease exists. I think the symptoms that women have are not always so unusual. I think they can be unusual in both men and women. One of the things that we have to focus on is how to recognize that these symptoms are from heart disease, but also to understand that sometimes these symptoms are not always due to heart disease and not be scared of discussing these with your doctor to determine whether it's something to be concerned about or not. I don't think that there is more heart disease in women now than there was. I think that we are diagnosing it earlier so in the past, women were not diagnosed with heart disease until they had their first heart attack or their first episode of congestive heart failure. We are much better now in risk stratifying women and treating them more aggressively. So we are better at slowing down the process of heart disease and diminishing or decreasing the rates of heart attack and congestive heart failure. I think today women, there are more women in the workforce than there were years ago and they have linked heart disease with stress especially in women. I think women tend to shoulder a lot of responsibilities in a more silent fashion than maybe men would. I think it is expected that women um, are multitaskers so they not only have to work um, a full-time schedule but they have to come home and they are expected to cook and clean and take care of the children. I think that in all those ways, women tend to ignore their symptoms a tiny bit more than men and will probably um, state that it's more fatigue and not really think that it could be heart disease. Because of working full time and taking care of families, women tend to not take care of themselves as much. They are not exercising and we're not watching what we're eating as much as we should. We will choose something relatively quick. We'll go out to lunch. Um, we won't necessarily look at the ingredients in what we're eating at lunch. And we are not exercising regularly because of the time constraints in our lives. A lot of this will come out to fatigue in women, which is often one of the signs of heart disease. But a lot of times women will get typical symptoms such as chest pain and jaw pain. And again, they may not attribute it to heart disease because they don't think they can have heart disease, but they can have typical as well as atypical symptoms. Some of the other atypical symptoms that I have heard a lot of women have is upper back pain. And they will complain of musculoskeletal pain that they figure they hurt themselves picking up their children or doing something at work. And yet upper back pain is a very common angina symptom. I think the first thing to do is call your doctor and discuss the symptoms with them. I think it is very reasonable to make an appointment, but if these symptoms are accelerating, I don't think I would wait for a doctor's appointment if they can't get to see you that day. I think if the symptoms are persistent or accelerating, it is reasonable to go to the closest emergency room so they can check an EKG right away, and that will let us know if something is going on acutely. A lot of it really depends on your overall risk factors and your age. So if you're young and you don't smoke and you don't have high blood pressure or high cholesterol, it is very reasonable to let your GYN doctor take care of all your medical problems. But if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or a strong family history of coronary artery disease, or if you smoke, um, I think it's important to start talking about these risk factors and how they're going to affect you and the risk of you having heart disease as you get older. 
In those cases, I think it is very reasonable to at least discuss with a cardiologist what we can do to try to screen and figure out if you have early heart disease or not. Ways that we screen patients for heart disease is looking at their overall medical history and their risk factors. How old you are, if you have high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, family history, and whether or not you smoke. There are many different risk factor stratification charts and tables that you can plug in your risk factors for and it gives you sort of an idea of the risk you have of developing heart disease. What we find in women, unfortunately, is that we are an understudied population and our risk stratification profiles don't work as well for us. So one of the things I like to do is something called the calcium score. Depending on your age and your risk factors, this calcium score is a limited CAT scan of your heart and picks up any calcified plaque that you have. Women tend to form calcified plaque later than men, so to do this too early would be probably not as useful. But if you're a smoker, if you have strong family history, it is reasonable to do a calcium score when you're in your mid-40s. If you don't have a lot of risk factors, I like to tend to wait until you're in your mid-50s or your 60s. There are other screening tools such as a carotid intima scan. It is an ultrasound of your carotid artery to look at the thickness of the wall of your um, carotid arteries as well as to look to see if you have any early plaque. This sometimes I do when you are a younger woman in your 40s if you have borderline blood pressure or family history. It does not require any radiation and is just an ultrasound study. This can sometimes help me try to determine whether or not I should be more aggressive in treating your blood pressure or your cholesterol. But overall, no matter what your screening test shows, you should always be exercising and eating well. Women can protect themselves from heart disease mainly by having a healthy lifestyle. And I know that sounds very simple, but I don't think that we pay attention to this enough. One is a healthy diet, trying to stick to um, fruits and vegetables and avoid things that come in a can or a box or going out to eat is probably the most important thing. Cutting down your sugars and your carbohydrates, things that are empty calories are probably not as needed um, in general. Two is exercise. We should always remain very active. You should try to walk up and down stairs as much as you can, but also a regular exercise routine, at least about 20 to 30 minutes a day for a total of 150 minutes a week is quite reasonable. I also stress the importance of changing up your exercise and not doing the same thing over and over again. It works out all your muscle groups as well as it works out your heart in different ways. The third thing is staying away from cigarettes. Cigarettes are um, the top killer of and the, uh, and the cause of heart disease. So if we stay away from tobacco products, that is very important. I think it's important to know your numbers and the numbers consist of um, a lot of different ones. One is it's important to know what your blood pressure is and what your baseline blood pressure is. Two, it's important to know what your cholesterol numbers is. Now, not all heart disease is um, correlated one-to-one -one with your cholesterol numbers. There are plenty of patients who have great cholesterol and yet have heart disease. But it is important to know that it is one factor that can lead to heart disease. And for you to know your total cholesterol, your good cholesterol, which is your HDL, your bad cholesterol, which is your LDL, and your triglycerides, it's important to know so that you can adjust your diet accordingly and make those numbers look better. As a woman cardiologist, what I would say is be aware of your body and be aware of your symptoms. Remain active at all times because it is during those times that you are going to be able to tell me that a symptom has changed. And when symptoms change, that's when something is going on. It's very hard as a cardiologist to determine whether or not the symptoms could be due to heart disease or not if you're not exercising regularly. But if you're exercising regularly and suddenly you feel that you cannot exercise the way you did just a few weeks ago, then we know something is going on and we can help you determine this.